The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Undoubtedly, you're always on the lookout for new recipes, so be sure to look for the fine ideas on the labels of Kraft Oil. Every bottle of this wonderful superfined oil carries a Kraft recipe. You'll find new specialties like Italian French dressing or orange pecan waffles with their own orange sauce. Get a bottle of Kraft Oil tomorrow. It's lighter bodied because it's super fine. That's why Kraft can rightly claim it the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings, baking, and frying. <laughs> Well, this is one of those cold December mornings in Summerfield, and the great Gildersleeve found it difficult to roll out of his warm bed. Now, after a big breakfast, he's trying to persuade himself to venture outdoors. Cold out there. Why not, Unc? You gotta face it sometime. Yeah, guess so. Hi, George, the air's so cold it crackles. That's the cellophane bag I got my lunch in. <laughs> oh. See, the garage door is open. Yeah, you forgot to close it last night. Why didn't you tell me? I forgot to. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, let's hop in the car and turn on the heater. <laughs> door handles are like icicles. Ooh, seats are, too. Yeah. Uh-oh. Car's cold. Want me to light a fire under it? No. Come on, car. If it was a horse, you could give it a lump of sugar. <laughs> It's got lumps. I'll try again. That didn't take long. Yeah, if I can just keep the motor running until it warms up. Hey, man. Leroy, did you hear something? Yeah, I hear a car motor. Hey, man. Sounds like somebody calling. Maybe it's Bertie. Maybe it's something important. Oh, I better turn off the motor. Eggman. Oop. <laughs> Cooley, we thought you were Bertie. No, I'm Mr. Cooley. Hello, Leroy. Hi. What would Bertie be doing delivering eggs in a morning like this? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go to town. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Cooley. I feel a little guilty about trapping you into buying a turkey last week. Oh, well, that's all right, Cooley. We enjoyed the bird. Yeah, but Unc said it's the last time you'll put something over on him. Leroy, I just meant to imply that Mr. Cooley is a smart little businessman. Thank you, sir. But you got to watch him, huh? <laughs> Leroy? Well, in view of the turkey incident, I decided it would be a very nice thing to present you with a duck. A duck? Here, isn't it a beauty, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, oop. Cold. Yes, even ducks have goose pimples today. <laughs> oh, my. This is very nice of you, Cooley. Oh, don't mention the favor. Where'd you get it, Mr. Cooley? From an egg. Oh, brother. A duck <laughs> egg. A duck egg, of course. <laughs> well, I better take the little duck and give it to Bertie. It is small, isn't it? No, Cooley, I didn't mean to reflect upon your gift. Well, I realize it isn't a meal for your family, Mr. Gildersleeve. The ducks are scarce this year. Well, I should buy one to go with the one you gave me. That is, if I can find one. It just happens that I'm holding another duck behind me. Oh! <laughs> Why, George, that coolie is pretty shrewd. The duck he gave me weighed about a pound. The one he sold me weighed five pounds. Yeah, I think I'll stop in and invite Peavy for a duck dinner. With Mrs. Peavy out of town, he'll appreciate it. Hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you this chilly morning? Uh, Peavy, I happened to come by a couple of ducks this morning. <laughs> Flying a little high, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> They were dressed ducks. 
Well, any duck who doesn't dress on a day like this, you'd have his head examined. <laughs> yes, yes. Peavy, I withdraw my invitation. What invitation? Well, since Mrs. Peavy is out of town, I thought I'd invite you to dinner this evening. Well, it's very nice of you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but she'll be back this evening. I'll have to meet her. Yeah, I see. Peavy, I'll bet you've been a bit lonesome this week. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what? If I do say so, I bore up very well. The first morning I was alone, I got up singing. You did? Singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. Of course, I wasn't really singing in the rain. I was singing in the bathtub. I get the picture, Peavy. I always sing when Mrs. Peavy's out of town. Uh, because you're happy? No, because she won't let me sing when she's home. <laughs> Mrs. Peavy doesn't have much of an ear for music. Oh, my goodness. Now, will you excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, while I put these bottles back on the shelves? Why all the pills on the counter? Taking inventory? No, your friend Mrs. Potter was in shopping. Yeah? <laughs> I've never seen a healthy person so fond of medicines. That little old lady loves her pills. Yeah, she was looking for something in a shocking pink cold tablet. <laughs> Did she have a cold? No, she just wanted to buy herself an attractive birthday present. <laughs> Say, if it's Mrs. Potter's birthday, I think I'll drop by to see her. Well, if you'd care to take her a gift, I can recommend a bottle of these green capsules. Hey, what's in them, Petey? Nothing, but she was admiring them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Petey. I have a better idea. will be surprised when I invite her over for dinner. Well, she has quite a nice little cottage here. A little heavy on gingerbread and wrought iron, but nice. And the shades are all pulled. I hope she's home. What a doorbell. I'll bet Paul Revere rang that one. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to hear it again. Good morning, milkman. Uh, the milkman? Just leave me a quart of milk and a half pint of cream. Mrs. Potter, this isn't the milkman. Are you sure? He's you. This is Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh. Oh, just a moment, Sonny. Won't you come in out of the cold, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, thank you. Sorry I kept you waiting at the door, but I don't open it for just everyone. Good. Yesterday I had a very shaking experience. Oh, it's too bad. A persistent salesman got his foot in the door, and I had to step on it. Oh? Oh, it upset me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, but it upset him, too. <laughs> you know I had the shakes so bad I had to take pills? Luckily, that's what he was selling. <laughs> well, I'm glad it was a happy ending. <laughs> oh, my dear. Sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, thank you. Eh... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mrs. Potter, I came over to wish you a happy birthday. Now, isn't that thoughtful? Mr. Gildersleeve, how old would you guess I am today? How old? Well, now, let's see, uh, 39? Oh. oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I asked you to guess how old I am, not how young I look. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're a very young-looking woman, Mrs. Potter. Oh, that's because I see my doctor every day. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Mrs. Potter, I'd like to ask you to come to dinner this evening. Me? A birthday dinner. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You're a very kind man. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's been years since anybody invited me to a birthday dinner. You know, I know you're very careful about your diet. I hope you like duck. Oh, I avoid some foods, but I never duck a duck dinner. <laughs> Why, George, you're all right, Mrs. Potter. So are you, Sonny. <laughs> Bertie. Yes, Miss Kilsey? We're going to have company for dinner. That's nice. I just been sizing up the ducks and we got enough for four. Oh, fine. Who's coming? Well, I invited Mrs. Potter. It's her birthday. 
Mrs. Potter? You've heard me speak of her. She's a little lady who enjoys going to the doctor. Oh, yes, sir. But she won't need no doctor from eating Bertie's cooking. No, indeed. Bertie's cooking is just what the doctor ordered. None better. Yes, sir. Miss Potter can just relax. She won't need no doctor because Bertie's cooking is just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, all right, Mr. Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know why Miss Potter can forget about the doctor? Yes, That's Bertie. That's right, because Bertie's cooking is just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Why, George Bertie's quite a cook, and she knows it. Hey, Uncle. Yes, Leroy. Oh, hey, you say somebody's coming to dinner? Mrs. Potter. Yeah? I sure am glad Mr. Cooley trapped you into buying another duck. No, Leroy. May I come in? Oh, hello, Marjorie. Hello, Monkey, Leroy. Hi. I hear you're having ducks for dinner. Yeah, they're in the kitchen. Yeah, the ducks are in the kitchen, but the pigeon's right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh? He means me. That's the last time Cooley's going to sell me anything but eggs. Ducks are expensive, Marjorie. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'd ask you and Bronco, but we only have enough for four. Oh, I understand, Donkey. I'll get it! <laughs> I'm right by the phone, Bertie. Hello? I'm Mr. Gildersleeve. This is Mr. Peavy. Oh, yes, Peavy. I have good news. I can come to your duck dinner. Uh, well, I thought Mrs. Peavy was coming home today. Mrs. Peavy got snowed in with her relatives. <laughs> well, Peavy, after talking to you, I concluded you couldn't come. You invited me. Well, I know, but... Are you trying to tell me you don't want me? No, of course not. Well, you're hedging about something. I am not. It's just that we're a little short on ducks. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, why did you invite me in the first place? Well, when I invited you, we were long on ducks. What did your ducks do, shrink? <laughs> no, Peavy. Stop trying to start an argument and come on over. Well, if you don't want me, Mr. Gildersleeve, I can heat up a hot dog at home. Over. Peavy, if you don't come, you'll ruin our entire day. Well, in that case, I'll be over. Goodbye, Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye. Now Peavy's coming over. Well, that's too many, Yankee. I know. That's what has me worried. You're going to call him back and tell him not to come? Leroy, there's only one thing to do. Eggman. Cooley, bring me another duck. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Just 19 baking days to Christmas. That means it's high time to bake that traditional Christmas favorite of fruit cake. You've undoubtedly baked cakes, pies, and cookies with super fine craft oil, but have you ever baked a fruit cake with this wonderful liquid shortening? Out of the famous craft kitchens has come a fruit cake recipe that I'm sure you'll agree is easier to follow than any other recipe you've ever tried and one that gives you a better-flavored, better-textured cake, rich and moist throughout, thanks to superfine craft oil. Superfining is an exclusive craft process for making an oil that's lighter-bodied and more delicate, since craft oil blends thoroughly with all the ingredients of any cake batter, every last crumb of baked cake contains shortening. No wonder there's moistness throughout, and it's wonderful eating. The Kraft Fruit Cake recipe calls for lots of candied fruits, for plump dates, rich mincemeat, crunchy pecans. It's a cake you can bake in a high tube pan, or in loaf pans, or even little muffin tins, making bite-sized individual fruit cakes that are sure to rate extra attention from guests. To get the recipe for this wonderful fruit cake made with Kraft oil, write to Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. Better write tonight. That's Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. Well, when the great Gildersleeve found out it was Mrs. Potter's birthday, he invited her for a duck dinner. Then the party was expanded by two, Mr. Peavy and another duck. What is it, Leroy? Mr. Cooley just brought the other duck. Good. Three should be enough for everybody. He says the price on this one has gone up. Gone up? Law of supply and demand, he said. You bought so many, you created a scarcity. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, my goodness. She was only kidding. Well, quite an expensive dinner. But it's worth it to make Mrs. Potter happy. You're swell, Unc. Always thinking of some way to make people happy on their birthdays. Uh, thank you, my boy. I wonder what you'll come up with to make me happy on my birthday. <laughs> Leroy. Well? Uncle, <laughs> come and see the table. Oh, decorated already, Marjorie? Uh-huh. I thought I'd do it to help Bertie. Have to go home to the twins in a few minutes. Gosh, Marge, this is keen. Say, very festive-looking boy. You like it? You bet. Well, you can sit at one end and Mrs. Potter at the other. And I'll sit close to the ducks. <laughs> yes, yes. How does everybody like this cake? Oh, boy! Looks like the Empire State Building. Yeah, I see Bertie's very diplomatic. She only put on one candle. <laughs> well, Mr. Gillsleeve, a woman loves to count the candles on her birthday cake until she's 21. After that, the fewer the candles, the better. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean, Bertie. Hey, do you suppose little old Mrs. Potter is strong enough to blow out one candle? Don't you worry about Mrs. Potter. I'd hate the Indian wrestle with her. <laughs> what time are you going to bring over, Miss Gilsey? Well, it's a little early yet. You haven't started the ducks, have you? No, sir. And yeah, don't forget to use some of your special basting sauce, Bertie. Oh, no, sir. Gosh, how long has it been since we've had duck? Yeah, it's been quite a while. I always liked the way Bertie seasoned the duck. Yeah, that dressing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. But I guess I better go get the oven hot. Bertie just loves a chance to prepare a special dinner. Ah, it! <laughs> <laughs> Will you uh, stay with the ducks, Bertie? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, well, Mrs. Potter, well, come in. Thank you. I was coming over for you. Did you take a taxi? Oh, no, I walked. Uh, all that distance? It's just a hop, skip, and a jump. I cut across two vacant lots, hopped a fence, and here I am. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you. Walking's good for the weight. You should do more of it, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mrs. Potter, I want you to meet the little family. Marjorie, Leroy. Yeah, yes, Uncle. Uh, Mrs. Potter, this is my niece, Marjorie. My, such a pretty girl. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Potter? Hello, sister. Sister. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Leroy. Oh, I might have known. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Junior. Junior? <laughs> my, you have such a nice family. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. I hope I haven't upset anything by coming early. Oh, no, no, indeed. Leroy, take Mrs. Potter's coat and hat. Sure. Mr. Gildersleeve, I think your house is so pretty. Well, let me show you around. We'll start with the kitchen. That's where the interest is today. I've, I've always loved the kitchen. Uh, Bertie, this is Mrs. Potter. How do you do, Miss Potter? Happy birthday. Why, thank you, Bertie. And these are the ducks. Yep, three beauties. Excuse me, and I'll finish whipping up this basting and salt. Oh, you don't want to spoil the ducks with that conglomeration, Birdie. Come again? <laughs> Mercy, no. Uh, Mr. Potter, why don't we look at the rest of the house? I think I better stay in here and help Birdie. You know, Mrs. Potter, you don't want to stay in the kitchen. This is your birthday. You come along now. Yes, ma'am. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, this is half the fun of being here. Now, Bertie, let me show you how I used to prepare my ducks. Oh, Mr. Gillsleeve, I... Uh, I... Uh, Mrs. Potter, uh, why don't you and I go out in the parlor and sit down? I want you to relax. Now, don't coddle me, sonny. When I used to cook, my family was much larger than this. Of course, they're all gone now. Uh-oh, that don't sound so good. <laughs> Aren't you mean Mrs. Potter's doing the cooking? Well, after a fashion, Leroy. I don't want to spoil her birthday. On the other hand, I... Don't want her to spoil the dinner, either. Can't you get her out of there? Yeah, I've done everything but pull her out with a derrick. How much does a derrick cost? <laughs> <laughs> well, not much more than the ducks, I guess. Oh, here comes Bertie. Well, Bertie, how's the dinner coming? It ain't coming, it's gone. <laughs> gone? Mr. Gillsleeve, did you know how she's cooking them poor ducks? 
Well, that's a little out of my line, Bertie. She's cooking them without salt and seasoning. That's what she's doing. She says she's cooking them natural. Well, Bertie... There's just one question Bertie wants to ask. What's more natural than salt? Well, I agree, Mr. Joseph, Bertie. everybody knows that salt is the salt of the earth. Well... So what's more natural than salt? Ah, it! Oh, brother, pandemonium. No, it's Mr. Peavy. Hey, hello, Bertie. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Nice day. Oh? Uh, come in, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leroy. Hi. Bertie, I didn't eat any lunch. Looking forward to your duck dinner. Bertie ain't doing the cooking today, and I want to make that clear to one and all. My, my. Uh, Peavy, I invited Mrs. Potter to have dinner with us on account of her birthday. That was nice. When is she coming? Yeah, she's already here. Yeah, in the kitchen, cooking the ducks. How's that? Well, that's why Bertie's upset, Peavy. Mrs. Potter is cooking the ducks natural. Natural? No salt or seasoning. You don't say. She won't even use Bertie's basting sauce. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I just dropped by to tell you I won't be able to come to your duck dinner. <laughs> now, Peavy, sit down. Bertie, where's Unc? He went back to the kitchen to see how Miss Potter's coming along. You don't. Why is everybody standing around looking so anxious? Stop pretending, Unc. You're as worried about the dinner as we are. Well. Give it to us straight. How are the ducks? Well, Mrs. Potter is a sweet old lady. Ruined, huh? Not yet. <laughs> but like she said, she hasn't been in the kitchen for a long time. Well, if we could get Mrs. Potter out, I imagine Bertie could save the day. Bertie, go down trying. Well, we don't want to offend Mrs. Potter. No, sir, but we sure wanted to enjoy a dinner. Mr. Peavy, I bet you could get her out of Bertie's kitchen. Me? Sure. Start talking about pills in a loud voice. Well, in the best interest of everybody, it might be worth a try. Yes, sir, let's try. Let's see, what pill will we talk about? Well, make up one. You're a druggist. Well, uh, have you people heard about the new pill? New pill, Peavy? Mr. Peavy, tell us about the new pill. Yes, Mr. Peavy, tell us about the new pill. Did I hear somebody talking about pills? Uh, yes, ma'am, you did. Hey, it worked. Well, I feel so kittenish, I may never take another pill. <laughs> Zeke. I'm so happy being here. I feel like dancing. Hey, somebody dance with her. What? Yo, oh, dance with you. Uh, Mr. Potter, may I have the honor? Would you care to dance? Uh, uh, me, Dan? Yeah, Leroy, go put on a record. Okay, old boy. <laughs> I haven't danced in years. Yeah, but it's your birthday. Calls for a celebration. Mm, I think so. Yeah, that's right. That's fine, Leroy. Come on now, Mrs. Potter. Let's trip the light fantastic. Well, I, I guess I can leave the kitchen for a few minutes. Oh, don't worry. I'll go keep my eye on the duck. Thank you, Bertie. My, everybody is so nice. Well, Mrs. Potter, we want everything to be just right on your birthday. My, Please. what fun. <laughs> You're a good dancer, Mrs. Potter. Oh, you flatterer. Pardon me, may I cut in? Why, Mr. Peavy, I'm the belle of the ball. <laughs> Hurry up, Leroy. We got to work fast. Yeah. Let me take a look at them ducks. They look all right. Yeah, but we got to make them taste all right. Now, hand me the salt. Salt. Pepper. Pepper. Sage. Sage. Now, Bertie's special basting salt. Oh, boy. Now, we'll spoon them back in the oven and do something about that discouraged-looking asparagus. Hurry up, Bertie. We don't want to get caught. Leroy, I'm going to season this dinner. Hey, things are beginning to smell good. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, you're doing an expert job of carving. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Potter. Hope I didn't neglect my dinner too long with all that dancing. When do we start eating? Uh, Leroy, wait until I finish serving. Well, I'm as anxious as Leroy. A very appetizing plate I have here. Everything tastes so much better when cooked without salt and stuff. Yeah, I wonder what Mrs. Potter will say when she discovers what Bertie did to her dinner. <laughs> Asparagus, Mrs. Potter? Thank you, Bertie. I just love asparagus the way I prepare it. Yes, ma'am. And I do hope all of you enjoy my duck. <laughs> well, I believe everybody is served. My, what a wonderful birthday. 
I want to thank you again, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, don't thank me, Mrs. Potter. Well, since I'm the cook, I suppose I really should taste everything first. Mm, here it comes. I think I'll begin with a little sliver of duck. Mm, mm-hmm. Now an asparagus tip. Mm-hmm. How is it? Mr. Gildersleeve, perhaps I shouldn't say this. You shouldn't? But this is the best dinner I ever cooked. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm so happy. Well, we all are. Come on, everybody. Happy birthday to Mrs. Potter. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mrs. Potter. Happy birthday to me. Great Gildersleeve will be with us in just 30 seconds. When you buy salad oil, why not get the lighter-bodied kind? Kraft oil is lighter-bodied, and women say it's better because it blends with other ingredients so much faster, so much more smoothly. Kraft oil is made by Kraft's own superfining process. That's why it's so light and good. That's why you're sure of perfect salad dressing and finest baking results when you use Kraft oil. Put a bottle of Kraft oil on your shopping list tomorrow. Well, Mr. Gillespie, the birthday party was a big success. Everybody went home happy. Yes, Bertie. Mrs. Potter had the time of her life. <laughs> yes, she sure did. <laughs> Just goes to show, when you try to do something nice for somebody, it usually turns out all right. Yeah, I feel real good inside. Maybe that's the duck. Well, <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, you didn't say anything about the dinner. Really, how was it? Well, frankly, Bertie, since you brought up the subject, I don't think it was your best duck dinner. Uh, no, sir. Yes, well, then, Mrs. Potter seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> well, Mr. Gilsey, I didn't season one of them ducks. Oh, you didn't? I played it safe and let it cook her way. Oh, that's very smart of you, Bertie. That accounts for Mrs. Potter raving about it. Yes, sir. But I got mixed up passing out the plate, and you got her done. <laughs> Good night, folks. Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Lee Robb, Bud Steffen, Elizabeth Patterson, and Dick Legrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, so smooth and delicately spiced, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember... When you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with Kraft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild Kraft mustard and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store. <laughs> Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.